In 1993, the trio Blink-182 burst onto the music scene with a fresh punk attitude laced with a surprising sense of humor. Since then, the San Diego-based band has gone on to win just about every major music award. But what their fans may not know is that one of these wild and crazy guys, lead singer Mark Hoppus, has a more down-to-earth side to him. Approaching this classic Southern California home, you might never guess that it belongs to one of today's hottest punk rock musicians. Hello, my name is Mark Hoppus and I play in Blink-182. Come in and check out my yards. Come on in. Mark Hoppus's home sits perched on a hill overlooking a private golf course. Not your typical neighborhood for a punk rocker. But Mark feels right at home, due in large part to his gardens. An impressive array of exotic plants, water features, and places to sit and soak up the sun. So, how did this punk rocker develop a love of landscaping? We had this house and, uh, that we bought before this, and it was, a, uh, it was just a total track house where you buy it and they give you a dirt lot with a house on it. And so we did all the landscaping in that house. And the second that we finished the landscaping there, was when we uh, saw this house and wanted to buy this, and we had just put all these plants in, so we brought a lot of the plants in with us. It was the first step in creating a tropical paradise. Uh, let's see, from our other house, we brought this uh, Phoenix Reclinata, this big one right over here. We brought uh, a couple of the uh, couple of these red banana plants and a couple of the, uh, the giant birds of paradise we brought from our other house. And a bunch of like the little canna lilies and I think that sago palm right here between these two rocks. I think we brought that from our other house too. To continue the tropical theme, Mark planted full-grown palms in the courtyard and driveway. For that, he needed a little help. Well, actually, he needed a lot of help. And a gigantic crane came in and uh, lowered this into place. The crane came down the driveway, parked here, and installed two uh, gigantic triple trunk kentia palms. And they had to lift it up over the house. They had to crane it in over the garage. It was pretty amazing. Sitting there watching this thing going, don't drop it, because that'd be bad. Bad. This uh, red banana plant and that red banana plant over there were planted at the exact same time and they were the exact same size and that one got frost really bad and this one didn't and so you can see how much more one grew than the other. But he made it. He's a little red banana plant that could or something. But this one has this freaky flower over here that you have to check out. It has this weird, look at this thing. It looks like Little Shop of Horrors. It's got this little like sappy, syrup stuff that comes off of it, and that's the kind of thing that, that eats you. It looks really haunted and weird, so it's kind of cool. And that's not the only odd plant growing in Mark's garden. The roots on this canary palm are growing over the rocks that are around it, so check it out. They're growing up, the roots are growing up and overtaking these rocks. There's a lot of weird things that happen in my yard that aren't necessarily supposed to happen. Roots that grow up, creepy uh, flowers that eat humans. I don't know, it's just how we like to do things at our house. But there's more to Mark's garden than just unusual plants and flowers. Check out this water feature. It runs from the front courtyard and under the outdoor fireplace, continues into the entryway, finally re-emerging into the backyard. This is a backyard and uh, it's pretty cool because it overlooks the golf course. And uh, this is where we hang out all summer. My wife and I will just sit naked in these chairs and just watch the golfers. Actually, we don't get naked, and if my wife saw that I said that, I'd be in a lot of trouble, so it's not true. And uh, to my mother-in-law, it's not true. It really isn't. But to all my friends, it is true. <laughs> when he's not on the road performing, Mark spends his free time hanging out with his two dogs, getting in a putt or two on the greens, and entertaining family and friends on the home's terraced verandas. It's kind of cool to use all kinds of different uh, materials out here. We have the, the mountain mist slate uh, that they use on the floor and on this wall. The wall's pretty cool. And they use a plaster on that wall, and they have uh, pl white plaster over here, worked in with sandblasted concrete over here. So there's all these different materials, and it kind of goes in cool with the woodworking in the house. It's all very zen, all natural uh, stone plaster and wood. 
the, the elements of the earth combine together to create a glorious atmosphere. <laughs> But occasionally, the home's welcoming atmosphere attracts unwelcome guests. This guy just moved in. Uh, we just saw him the other day. This is crazy. Look at how big he is. That's not, that's not your normal spider at all. And uh, yeah, he's gonna, he's gonna overtake us one of these days. <laughs> Mark's not only an accomplished musician, he also has a green thumb. Well, sort of. All these plants right in here, I planted myself because uh, I'm very impatient. I went down to the nursery and got all these daylilies and agapanthus, and I'm super proud of myself for planting all these, but there's so many other plants here. I'm like, yeah, I planted all these. There's like 20 of them. And there's like 5,000 plants, so this is my this is my contribution to my yard. This one little row and that little one little row over there. So yeah, <laughs> pretty good, huh? <laughs> Not bad, Mark. From wildlife to wildflowers, Mark Hoppus's garden really rocks. <laughs> Mark might like to get his hands dirty in the garden, but some musicians prefer to let someone else toil in the soil. <laughs>